What's, What's up? up, Thomas? How are you, man? I'm good. How are y'all this morning? We are doing fantastic. And I always got to point out that you mean a lot to me because when we adopted Oliver, I came to you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you gave me some advice, bro. That boy's about to be three years old and he has changed the dynamic of our family. So wow. I always tell people that that you were somebody who gave me the encouragement before I said yes. Man, that's so awesome. Uh, and, and there's no telling how many more people that are going to do the same because of your story. You know? so, yeah, man. Uh, Spreads like wildfire. It's important to have good mentors. So I really appreciate well, that, brother. I had good mentors, man. So <laughs> so how are you, man? How's the family? How's Lauren? How are the girls? How's your health? Everybody's good. Everybody's healthy. I think that's kind of the main thing. Everybody's healthy, and uh, we're back in school, and that's kind of kicking our butt. But other than that, it's um, we're rocking. The tour is like almost over in September, and I've uh, been in the studio quite a bit this year, and uh, just looking forward to having a little bit of off time in the fall, getting to watch some college football and get ramped back up in the spring of next year. So. Oh, yeah, we're, we're in it. Hey, if you can, ma'am, just because a lot of us don't live the tour life, what, what is that like? Are, are you home for two days, gone on the road for the rest? Is it you're gone for two weeks at a time? I don't know. How does that all work? I feel like country music does it the best. You know, I think like a bunch of pop and rock tours will leave for like six months, you know, and go to like Asia and, and Europe and Australia and all these things. And I feel like country music, at least when we're touring in North America and in Canada, we go out, we leave on a Wednesday night and we play Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and we're home, you know, before church on Sunday. So it's, it, it works out pretty good for everybody. Yeah. Central Florida cannot wait. You're here in just a couple of short days, going to be performing at the Amway yeah. with us. And at the end of the month, we already know we've been playing Angels, the song that's off of the celebration of 20 number ones. Yeah. It is a celebration of yeah, the ride sure. that people have been able to follow within your songs and take on with you. Yeah, man. And and also to put it on vinyl, it just it feels like a collector's piece. You know, yeah. like we, we put a lot of thought into, you know, what the cover was going to look like and um, like inside the vinyl of like what was happening in my brain during the release of my first record and what was happening, you know, when we won this award or, or did that. And so it's I think it's just a really cool. It's just a cool piece to own. Good stuff. Well, if you don't mind, we've got Thomas Red on. We'd love to throw him in the hot seat with our questions. Cool. Okay, question number one with Thomas Red. You go home tonight, right? What's the first thing that you do? You, you get off the bus, you get home. What's your routine? Um, man, I usually am getting off the bus on like a Sunday morning at like 5 a.m. And so it's like immediately pour a cup of coffee and then get all the kids ready to go to church. Like Sundays are absolute chaos. Monday is a little bit better and Tuesday is... I'm just now recovering, and then Wednesday I leave again. It's like it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty vicious cycle while you're on tour, and especially while your kids are in school. But coffee helps a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it does. does, dude. I love that you make Sunday a non-negotiable. Yeah, man. We you know we st- we used to play a ton of shows on Sundays, and I, I want to say it was like maybe five years ago that I kind of looked at I asked my team, you know, just like, hey, I just I just don't want to play on Sundays anymore. Um, it's just it's just kind of a sacred day for me and my family, and and uh, I just kind of want my kids to know that it was normal that, you know, we went to church on Sundays. I, I don't want them cool. to think that like work ever came before that. So yeah. it's um it's been pretty cool. So on that parenting tip, we do something called the panic button. We had a dad stressing out because he's the type of dad who, if the kids are acting up, he grabs them up, brings them to the car. And he's married to somebody with a different parenting philosophy. How are yeah. you and Lauren when it comes to that? If there's a bad day, do you, yeah. you scoop them up and go, or do you try to just sit in the moment? We try not to, like, figure out how we're going to parent in front of our kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like I've made that mistake before of, like, you know, Lauren saying something and be like, hey, you know, I, I don't agree with that. And she's like, well, I, I don't agree with your disagreeance. And then all of a sudden <laughs> the kids are like... The kids are like, oh, let's just sneak off and do it anyway. You know, um, and so you see them you know, bring we, out the popcorn. They're like, this is good. <laughs> yeah. So usually, like, if I make a decision in front of our kids, my wife supports it um, in the moment. And then if she makes a decision in front of our kids, I support it. And then if one of us disagrees, then it's like when we, when we get in the bed that night, we're like, hey, I, I didn't agree with the way you did that today. So. <laughs> wow, that's great. Yeah. Great communication. And I usually, and I'm usually wrong. So. <laughs> That's great, man. Love that humility. Okay, so what's the most dangerous thing Thomas Red has ever done? Um, I don't know. I think skydiving was the stupidest thing I've ever done. Um, <laughs> even though my wife said it was going to be just fine, and it was just fine. It's just, do you really know the person that's packing your parachute? No. You know what I mean? <laughs> Unless it's, like, it's you. you. Know, this this eighteen year old hippie that just moved to Hawaii that like all of a sudden is like a professional and packing parachutes. I don't know. 
Uh, that is hilarious. How about with college football? What's Thomas Rhett's favorite snack? Oh, dude, a buffalo chicken dip is like my favorite thing in the world. Okay. Love yeah, it. I like that. Yeah, my wife makes it. It's like pulled chicken and just like, and then like buffalo and like sour cream and cream cheese. It's just so good. Okay, last question with Thomas Rhett, and that's if aliens were to arrive on this planet, which that's a big hot topic today, and Thomas Rhett was chosen to be the representative of the planet, how would you explain us earthlings to the aliens? Uh, we're unpredictable. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot wait. I know Cole Swindell, Nate Smith, stopping through again the M-Way. Best of luck with everything in the future. The next 20 number ones cannot wait for that album to come out down the line. <laughs> yeah, brother. Oh, my gosh. Thank you all so much. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, man. God bless you and the family, bro. Likewise. Thank you.